Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Able Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. And these are special forces guys, and these are jiu-jitsu guys, and these are dads, and their husbands, their fathers, their grandfathers, and all this stuff. And they're just lost, right? right? A lot of them. And you say true words. Me, Mike, and Danny get to speak into them, and here they come, right? Yep. And it didn't take a lot of effort, right? right? Um, it took being the light. It it took someone saying it out loud, right? Yeah. And where the and where the truth is spoken, people will gather. Yeah. And as the lights dim, right? They saw a light. They saw a light. Like, let's stand by the light. Yeah. Right? Let's go. And it wasn't Jimmy, by the way. And you yeah. know that. You yeah. know. The light was Jesus Christ coming right. out of a man that can't get enough of it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I want to stand here. Mm-hmm. That's cool, right? That's purpose. Yes. And I don't know why you would do all of this without that, right? So that was a real shock to the system. It breaks my heart that those guys don't have conversations like we just had in my truck for nine hours, right? Because right? they'd be better men if they did, right? So how do you facilitate that? Yeah. How do you use this platform to say true words to make men stronger, Mm -hmm. right? Because the whole world, you're going to be competing with garbage that's going to make them weaker. It's going to talk about Valhalla, and they're going to talk about, you know, here's the, whatever. It's just, just, a lot of it's garbage, and it's sexy, and I get it, man, in my 20s, but when I was a child, I talked like a child, and I acted like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me, and this is what we're doing now. That sounds like scripture. You know, I just made that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it absolutely is, yes. right? And that's that, and that hits me hard a lot yes. when I see childish things. Mm-hmm. And when you see childish things as a man, you can smile and go, that's childish. It's childish. Right? People are like, what? what are you talking about? Everybody's doing it. And I go, no, look at the state of the world. Well, how would you say that? I'd say it like this. And I go, that sounds better. How about we do that? Because we've talked about this. If you modeled something for our young people, they just might follow, Right. I didn't have that model as, as a young Christians were straight laced. And I'm like, you guys are weird. And I want nothing to do with right. it. You know, yep. you're judging me about the way I live. You dress funny. You talk funny. I'm good over here with my run DMC or my, my parachute pants. Or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, but I wanted nothing to do with it. It went the other way. Right. So like, that's, that's, I just thing. played that movie. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, if you modeled that thing, Meaning, you know, and, and you, you had said something, this, this ping that, that, that I toe the line and I do, I have a standard and, and I require, like how much is really required of you as a Christian man on this earth from this world? I would guess the answer is not much. Right. Here I require to come in the building. Again, not in charge. You do whatever you want in the parking lot, but you must act like this because you will be decent here. Right. That's the deal. Well, here's the like other thing. Here's the other, here's the other piece of that requirement in terms of capability. And this was the other piece that I wanted to hit on is, <clears throat> is uh, Nick and I drive in. There's a special event on this coming Saturday. And so we have this standard that we have to meet. Yeah. Meaning we have to we have to pass the recall test, yeah, and which is not an easy thing to do. No, and so we have to come in because it's so far. We have to come in with enough time to take a crack at it. Hopefully, we've done enough work before we left the house that when we take that crack at that recall test, that we pass it. Mm -hmm. And why do we want to do that? So that then we can spend the week preparing for the special event that's coming up. If we don't pass that recall test, then it's like we got to scramble a bunch of training to zero in on the things that we didn't pass. And then there's stress, which is a good thing, but it's still stress. And you're like, man, I got to get the thing. Right. And... It's, but if you don't meet the standard, then what comes in those advanced training special events is what I think are the the next level applications to how we're growing these ministries in our communities. Yeah. And, but you have to have the standard. To your point, you have to have the standard because if the standard is wavering, there's no integrity. And when there's no integrity, children can see that in a nanosecond. Never mind 
other adults and so it's like mm-hmm. it's a especially with men but obviously with women as well but especially with men mm-hmm. if 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 i lose credibility i'm done mm. right the world we live in everything's a rip off till it isn't right yep. so if i lose credibility so things are done. it's just done right? we knew we knew that's how it was gonna go uh, well the, right the the um you know what is just message when you guys came to church and we studied it on monday as well uh this Jeff Swarzentraub at, at Brave Church. What's up, Jeff? Hopefully he's checking it out. But it is um the one of the first things he said that I wrote on paper was men love to be challenged. Mm-hmm. That's like, the first real thing. Real men love to challenge, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what you just said. And there's an you know, ember like, burning in us. Like I need to do that. like yeah. you you're calling you are you calling me out? I am actually. Okay, I'll show, all right. Yeah. So tan patch, okay. And if I get that, how about green patch? Like green patch is no joke. Like tan patch is no joke. I've right. never seen, you know, like for what we're doing to require that you can do that level of entries with that level of shooting, I don't know who does that, right? And I've seen a lot. I haven't seen it all, but I've seen a lot. And I've worked at the upper echelon of what I would call the government training, right? Um, and some of the things that we've done with civilians surpasses that. And I'm not kidding. I'm not like trying to blow smoke and look at the me and whatever. I'm saying we have civilians that never had a background in this can pass federal government bodyguard training that i've seen navy seals fail that's as true as the day as long and i can prove that to you right but it just means they rogered up to say please challenge me and i did and they got better and they failed and then they didn't fail and now all of a sudden they're passing these elite level mm-hmm. trainings what does that do for their self-esteem oh, when they're calling right. me? Like, so i'm good. capable of doing this for my family not jimmy's the hero of my family i am he just showed me the way i want to you, you said a couple things um Credibility, and before that, I think you said what's required of a Christian man. So for me, and I'm absolutely positive for you as well, you can make a mistake in here training somebody and then fix it, Mm -hmm. right? But you are outwardly acknowledging that you are an ambassador of Christ, the credibility is much higher if you screw that up. That's right. Than if you screw up a scenario in here, because you can fix that. But when you screw up the representation of Christ, that's hard to fix. Because then the yeah. people are offended, yeah. and then you've, you've earned the title. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I said that. See, I told you, they're just waiting. The right. world is waiting for oh, that right. guy Absolutely. to fail. Absolutely. But I, what I meant was, what what is required of you to continue going to church? Nothing. Yeah, could you chug a case of whiskey and and you know punch him out and right. still show up and walk in the door? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's a goal. The, but the required part. But so like, sweet. Uh, why isn't yeah. there? Why isn't there? Why isn't that being taught? If you're gonna if you're going to claim to be an ambassador of Christ, mm-hmm. why isn't that being taught in the church? And I'm not saying all churches. Sure, sure. But or even in, in just in life in itself, as far as Christian men or the Christian community, doesn't yeah. necessarily have to fall on the pastor of a church. There is a requirement. You're to uphold. You you've willingly made a choice to accept the salvation of Christ, the mm-hmm. sacrifice that he did. So with that, you fall into the ambassadorship. There's a requirement for that to uphold his reputation. Mm -hmm. And people are not being taught that. And on top of that, they're not not being held to it. Right. And older, the Pauls of the world aren't going to the Timothys and say, hey, man, you can't do that. Think about what you just said. Think about what you just did. Nor is it their jobs. Like the pastors couldn't do that. That's our job. Right, exactly. That's our job. We're the, right? we're the disciples that the pastors right. help make. But it, but it takes work. And like, you know, and you guys you guys know that I have had uncomfortable conversations in this program, remove people from this program. I've done mm-hmm. all of that stuff, and it's not fun. No. no. You know, I, you no. guys know that I just wrote a letter to a pastor last week mm-hmm. and said, hey, you know, I had to do the old, what is it, the bread and the meat and the thing, you know, be super nice and then hit the, you know, punch them in the stomach and then, and then praise them afterwards. Bakes and good, he bread. handled it. And bread's good. Meat, not so much. I think it's rotten, but the, the bread's good. Um, but um, that was not easy to write. Right. 
and he handled it like a champ and were tighter because of it. Right. Right. That's how a man responds. He responded back and said, brother, I appreciate this. And I'm like, Ooh, because I thought we were about to not be friends anymore. Right. right. But all of a sudden we're, we're, we're tighter. Cause he's like, thank you for that. Cause yeah. I don't want to do that again. I harm somebody and you saw it and I didn't realize right. it or whatever, you know? So that's just good stuff. And I would ask that back to me, you know, and I get feedback all the time from amazing um, Christian guys to recalibrate that compass to that one of the conversations that we had. Mm -hmm. But I think that that is on us, right? Um, there's a Francis Chan video out there called I'm Not Your Moses. I'll send it to you guys. It's fantastic because mm -hmm. he talks about that. Like everybody's like, I don't feel fed and I'm not doing fed. It's like, hey, man. And this is, wasn't in there, but I was, I asked you guys this. Have you ever been so hungry that you would eat rice off the floor? Like people show up not hungry and they're like, entertain me, pastor. Right. And it's like, hey, man, right. that's not his job. His job is to speak the word of God. And for you to come here to recalibrate, but man, you should be out there feeding people all week and come in here. If you truly, we talked about this this morning, if you really serve the God, the, the, the Lord, your, your God, with all your heart, strength, mind, and you know, all your, all your, I mean, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. All your, I don't know anybody that serves God with all their strength, like it, to exhaustion, yeah, right? Right. right? And you crawl in the church to get refilled, right? right. That's but exactly. you're like, well, that's what my pastor should be doing. Like, that's what you should be doing. Right. Right. So that's, that's awesome. It's hit me like a ton of bricks um, this week. Future, what's it look like? Ideally, perfect word. Ideally, the future, what does the future look like for me? Um, there is a mature team at Anchor Church that serves as a resource for any other team in Missoula or Western Montana or Montana or whatever it is um, where they can help develop the capability of other teams. And really then what we're talking about is the expansion of a ministry and the expansion of a community where... Um, where those individuals are feeding and being fed and growing and advancing the kingdom of God. Um, and it along the way, they are perpetuating a standard of excellence uh, around the able shepherd capability. So that's, and I, I see it actually going even much beyond that. I would I would dare mimic that. Um, the for me, it's a a greater distance coming here. Mm -hmm. um, so to make to to do everything that I can to fit that standard of excellence to represent what's happening here and bringing that back home on the. Uh, shooting capabilities, the protector take capabilities, whether that's hand to hand or whatever that looks like. And then while doing so, making sure that the presence of God is, is recognized, that there's something different. And then, like Jay said, is, is contributing to expanding the kingdom and not with, um, Weak-minded, not sending, not making weak-minded people, but letting them know through action, through example and discipline that there's a standard and Christ is that standard and that we have a responsibility to our homes, to our communities. And as that spreads, as we all know, across the country, I don't know what it looks like in the future for this country. I mean, we all know what happens in the end. But what happens between now and then, um, I pray to God that there's a revival and that this church just explodes and comes alive and truly takes our country back. I don't remember which songwriter it is. Uh, maybe it's, I'm going to probably mess this up. Maybe it's Matthew West, but... Um, this, the song is, why am I here, or, or something along that line, and, and in the song, God answers back, 
that's why you're here. I put you here for this. And sometimes we think too small and forget that God can do anything with any one of us if we're willing to move. And um, especially this week for me, Mm -hmm. that was uh, one of the biggest things that that I've heard through our conversations and through our experience at church is I can't wait for so-and-so to move and follow that person. It's to your, uh, to your point, I'm going this way and you're welcome to follow. Mm -hmm. And that's the mentality I'm going to take when I go home. So. Hey man, like I, I, to take a crack at it, I think the future holds, I want to protect schools. Mm. I want to, I want to build or be part of building safe options for educating our children for what's coming. Because I think it's going to get ugly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it must. People yeah. say this can't happen. I say it must happen. Open your Bible. This is going to happen. What you're in charge of is what are you going to be doing while it happens? The, my best bet is honor God by taking care of one another. Mm-hmm. And that might be physically ugly. Um, it might be very ugly because that's typically what happens when societies are pinched, right? Um, protecting children in churches and schools. I want to pursue the hearts of men and I want to use adventure to do it. Right. The Rocky Mountains are right over there. You can see them from here. Right. So getting up in there and using that to tap in. Um, we are entertaining this ministry this summer. Um, that is likely going to be called what is a man? It's a going to be a, 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 a retreat is a Christian retreat. And people are like, ah, I don't retreat. I, whatever. I don't care if we call it a retreat. I don't care what we call it other than um modeling for people what that looked like mm-hmm. it's not i used to think it was this welcoming boys it's a rite of passage for boys into manhood man 60 year old men need that they need to be affirmed and welcomed into manhood and say don't ever question again if you're a man right because i've just seen that too many people that don't have a def- the definitions correct in their head um so 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 doing that and and, and building those folks and, and and reaffirming uh those men or welcoming people into young men into manhood it's a big deal Another thing is is the building expansion. Like I said, mm-hmm. if time is tight, we should go bigger than we planned on instead of phasing it in over the 10 years. And I truly, I've never been that person saying this is going to happen in my lifetime. I'm the guy saying this is going to happen in my lifetime, right? This is unsustainable, of course, wrong, right? And if I'm in charge of myself and my family, it means I'm going to honor God. And these, that... As we explore the um, spiritual journaling and all that yeah, stuff, and yeah, being yeah. receptive to what God is saying to you and then acting on it, mm-hmm. he's yelling at me right now, right? And I can't not hear it. Right. So I'm going to go. So I'm going to go bigger than I ever planned on going. And whatever we need to do to make that happen is, is creating that facility that brings people in and models correctly how to do this, that does toe a line and say, you know, that's, We've talked about this. This will be the place I want every church in this area to come and train and say, there's a standard and we are all uniform, safe, and accurate. So if I need you, you come in. I need you, you come in. And the second you walk in my door, we're already on the same page. Right? That's right. And it'd be great to have a hub out there that you were that in Montana, that you were that out in Maine. And like, what do you mean you don't go here? Mm. That's where you go to do this. That's why we can do it and you can't. Right. right? And it's not look at me, look at me. It's like we're serving and it feels good, you should try it. And then right. they do it, and they go, you know what? I feel what you said. I don't, you didn't convince me of anything. I came in reluctant, and now I'm doing it. Right. And I'm, I'm a better man. Right? Does going bigger include a Cessna for you to come get me? Why? I don't know why it wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> God's Cessna anyways. I don't know why it wouldn't drop it off in the next front yard. <laughs> That's right. But that, and that, I think that is. It's like, you know, this is, we talked about this. God's resources towards God's purposes, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I, if this isn't of God, I don't know what is because I just don't typically talk like this and the dreams I've had and the, the stories I've shared with you guys. Mm. It's not typically me, but I like it. I like this guy. Well, I, I love that guy. Mm, absolutely. Thank that you. guy, man. You over here, this guy. Oh, right? man. I I, you know, I, um, and I, one of the things that I don't know because of the nature, because of the state of the union, be, which includes the nature of media in our current era what most people don't know so this tie between uh nick in maine increasing capability jason in montana increasing capability um and 
than us trying to expand out from there and trying to do it as quickly as we possibly can. And uh, epicenter of Abel Shepard and Jimmy Graham in Colorado and and creating as, as many opportunities to expand capabilities for as many organizations as he can. Right. What, what the state of the nation and the, the state of media is, mm. is that Christianity in this country, on this soil, is under major attack. And you can't sure. read about it almost anywhere. And it's, it's real... It's real threat every day. And it doesn't seem like that because we come from the land of milk and honey in a nation that was based on Christian principles. And so we feel like, uh, because of the history of our nation, that that could never be under attack. But the reality is that it's never been under greater <clears throat> attack than right now. So this urgency is how do we expand that to uh, to engage in our roles as protectors and help increasing the capability of other individuals who are protectors because that's the front line between good and evil um, when when that's manifested through flesh and human right I've told you that you know I'm not the big doomsday guy but this thing that we're doing, is way bigger than what I realize. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that now, right? It's like, people are like, yeah, we'll all band together and well, I may never see you again. And you may lead people to let's save their life because of something that I was a small part of, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that, that ripple goes out the way right. to where I think that that is, that is a thing. I'm investing into my young people, meaning my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm investing in anybody into this program, actually anybody that'll listen to the podcast, anybody that'll watch anything like that, fully investing in that to try to model a thing that's sustainable to potentially save your life eternally, right? Our young people, just like we said, our men, we haven't required much of them because it's the milk and honey, man. It's like, right. hey, get on your iPad, do your thing. Right. Heaven forbid, do a push up. You know, it's like, right. whatever. It's like, there's really not a lot going on and that's unfair. Right. So I do require things of my children. I model things. I get them out. Sometimes I train them and they don't know their training. We're just having fun, but they didn't realize they were learning a skill that could save their life. Mm -hmm. Right. And then something happens, a little blip in the system. And then somebody gets out of line. We need it. And it wasn't a huge emergency, but it worked. And I go, do you see what we were actually doing? Right. You know, it could have been bad. It just wasn't. And then tell them that they did a good job. I think to, to what Jay was saying, um, we're the last generation alive that witnessed what the country was. Every, everything, the generations after us are soft, sitting home, playing video games, whatever. Whatever it is they're doing. But they're between the school systems and uh, media, TV shows, even commercials are attacking manhood. Mm -hmm. And... So they have no idea what they're missing out on. They don't know. I would probably say it so much it's sickening, but they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. So it, it, as I'm sitting here listening and just thinking of all these things, it just put a, a heavy load on my shoulders where I have, to, I have to start educating these younger kids to make them understand, to help them understand what it looked like and how it was supposed to, how it's supposed to be. And with adding to that is start finding one, two or three that you can pour into so that to your point where you just said that um, you could be gone, who's going to carry that torch. Yeah. And if, and if we, if we, and there are a lot of guys like that and I've been there yeah. mentally where I'm it. I'm the one that's going to get it done. I can't count on whoever, or it's just easier if I do it myself type of thing. And as I, as I sit here and recognize how old I am, I need to start bringing somebody up. And yeah. 
Because mm-hmm. if they don't know, it's because we haven't taught them. Exactly. Right? Right. So it's like, in, it, you know, at risk of being the old dudes that are like, the kids today, you know, like, you're all going to die. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, then get to it. And we can't. Well stated, <laughs> Elder Higgins. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And we, and we do, we have to, uh, we have to embrace as much as we don't want to, like we're on a podcast, like what's happening right now, you know, um, there will, and, and I post on Facebook and we do all this stuff. I'm writing a book. I never thought that was coming. And it's on this, it, books? it's on this exactly. You better buy a paper book. You know why? Cause the government can't come in and white out the pages, right? right. But they can change anything that's on here. So do I want to help five kids or do I want to help 5 million kids? Mm-hmm. Right. Th- there's a mechanism to do it. Mm-hmm. Like I get, I get feedback from all over this country when I post my devotional. Yep. A Navy SEAL that says, thanks for posting this. That's in, maybe in a different country, at least on the other side of the country, or a house mom, or somebody in the Navy with, or blah, 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 whatever. Um, it's a powerful tool. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Use it for good. Yep. That's you right. Know? And people are like, I'm, I get it. You don't have to be on Facebook, but you're just opting out of the conversation. Right. right? If, you're, if you're not putting it out, you're saying, well, then you guys put it out. And right. then you're mad because they heard it. Like, okay, well, you're the one that gave them the microphone, right? You didn't even step to it. So right. I think that there is something that we need to get more educated on how these um, thoughts are being, how these battles are being fought. The other thing is, I can't, I don't think that, you know, that young man that we just had lunch with, mm-hmm. there's a strength in him. Mm-hmm. There's something going on in my, my nephew Lance. Um, if you think that we're not going to be okay, I would like to introduce you, you both know them, to Rebecca, Sarah, Christian, and Eden. Mm-hmm. We're going to be okay. It's going to suck because the hard times are coming. But if you um, require much from your young people, they will want to work from you for Mm -hmm. you. They always have. Right. But it's going to require, it may not be Jimmy Graham that, that, that turns the tide for any of this. It might be Christian Graham, Mm -hmm. but what's required to Christian Graham is Jimmy Graham. Right. So I've got to be the guy that influences. Maybe it's my children. Maybe it's, BK, maybe whatever. It's like something about that guy made me a little better. And then God steps into your life and you change. And I don't care who does it. It just needs to happen. Right. Cause all the glory goes to God. Cause it will kill us if we try to claim that. So that's in, in, in my mind, that's encouraging. Most guys I know are action adventure guys. They'll sit there on Netflix and that's where they go. Cause they love action adventure. Well, wake up your living one. Okay. So if you want to fight, there's many out there, pick one and get to it. Uh, but I don't see a lot of it. So, and I'm not saying it's not happening because we just talked about Jeff and, you know, right. Jeff Horsentraub, um, you know, Jack Hibbs. There's so many people, the young generation with Turning Point USA, Charlie right. Kirk, Charlie brother, Kirk, yeah. there's something happening. Oh, that's yeah. right. So that's I'm right. not going to sit here and, and you know, and, and bash churches. Right. A lot of them are jacked up, right? Okay, find a better one. Right. But if you're not a believer, get to a good church. And if you're one that ain't bringing it, then go to another one, but come hungry. Don't sit there and expect to be entertained because that's what you're used to because of, you know, whatever, all the social media stuff. So it's going to take work, but um, it's worth it. So again, people are worth it. Any last thoughts? Um, probably nothing that I haven't already said, but all I can, I can, I want to encourage because for me, like I said, this week has been, well, I shouldn't even say it. It hasn't even been a week yet. Uh, uh, this place been, ages you in dog years. I know, right? <laughs> uh, it's been, uh, well, like you said earlier, you, you just finished a, a fast, as we did at our church as well, and God spoke. And coming out here, he's tied that together for me, how he spoke to me during that fast and and what's been being said here. So I, I've posted things on Facebook. I've, I'm sitting here and as you're talking about that, the, the first thing that popped in my head is we, we teach weapons retention. Keep your gun in your hands. Don't let the bad guy get it. Facebook, uh, Twitter, all these other things have been used for evil. And to your point, we're going to take it. We're going to take the bad, the weapon that they've been using against us and turn it on them, mm-hmm. meaning these media types, and start pounding it with devotionals or or podcasts or I mean I share Jack Hibbs and I, the all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. on mine. And so what I would I guess what I'm where I'm going with this is I would encourage anybody listening that if you're a Christian, you're going to church to be refilled and weaponized 
to go out into the world and you're given the sword, the double-edged sword, and use it responsibly and use it with love. Don't give up and spend more time on your knees than you've ever spent before. And if you and if you're not sure what that is, then it's not enough. Keep doing it. And then find somebody, a Paul or a Timothy or whatever the case, be poured into and pour it out and let yourself be sharpened. Don't think that you're too smart, that you don't need to be sharpened. Get out there, find somebody that's willing to speak truth and love into you, and then do the same. We're in a war, period. And it's time to act like it. Amen. Well, that's amigo. I can make up our own Spanish words. Hermano means brother. Amigo means friend. Hermigo Stan, Go, the place amigo. that happens. Get, get, stay <laughs> hit it, Hermigo. Yeah. Um, you know, we... I, I think for me, it's it's having a because we've been talking about a, uh, the significant amount of time, effort, energy, resources committed to the um, the development, the polishing of uh, our spiritual walk. And that's what happens for me every time I'm down here. Um, the development, the polishing of our capabilities and the development and the polishing of our, uh, our, our personal life visions and how we try to steward the opportunities around us hmm. uh, as a reflection of the will of God. And that sounds way up here for, uh, for, for somebody that um, doesn't have a relationship with Christ. And it's much, it's much easier than how all of that sounds. It's, it's, taking a step towards exploring the person of Jesus Christ and how he walked and and but just taking a step it doesn't even have to be a perfect step it's like when we learn j turns pick a forward gear it doesn't have to be the fastest gear it just has to be a gear and because the reality is that whether you're a believer or not what you see in this country today is absolute chaos. It's upside down. And uh, there's a collection of books that talk exactly to how it's upside down, why it's upside down, and where all of that is going. And so it's when, whether we're talking about uh, fixing broken men or supporting our children it's as simple as one step forward it's a forward gear in that direction and it's not any more complex than that feed the front feed the front that's right <laughs> i've got tactical terms yeah that's i think what's popping in my head about a final thought is is that me personally like and i think a lot of men would resonate with this if you are truly that action adventure time, I'm almost sick of hearing my own voice talking about it, right? My calendar looks like a bag of Skittles this summer, you know? Then it's not because I did, it's because Melissa built it. <laughs> no, it means that we are not going to just sit here and talk about it. Right. This whole summer is full of action steps, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this podcast is our voice and we get to share this so we can invite other people and spread the word. I don't want to just affect 100 people. I want to affect millions of people, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to do the legwork. We're willing to spend all summer investing in these children and then making a show showing how showing how you invest in your children. You don't have to do it the way we did it, but this is being done, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't want to have regrets about how I raised my kids. I don't want to have regrets about like I, I I'm when elders speaking to me, when I got my mentors speaking to me, I hear that. Mm-hmm. I hear that, you know, there's you have to make the time. You've only got so many more summers with Rebecca in in your home under your care. All of this stuff, it absolutely matters. And uh, I've had some good models in recent years and I will be a good model and I'm not just going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So like I told Parker when I was coming back from Texas. Um, if you don't own a mouthpiece, you might want to order one because we're going to get bloody on this one, yeah. right? So, um, and that that may mean, and 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 I don't know that I shared this, BK, but we, you know, and this is rough to talk about, but you must hear this. After all of this with Texas and all that, my heart was in a sensitive place, meaning that I'm just it's it's broken for men, it's broken for America. I love this country, and there was a suicide in my daughter's school, mm. right? A young man in her class for whatever reason, believed lies and, 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 and that happened. How do you deal with that without Jesus, without the truth? Mm. It's not only a disservice. I think it's, it's malfeasance to go Mm. and lead with a pack of lies, or at least go in there, not armed with the truth and do further damage. That bothers me in Mm -hmm. a big, big way. Mm -hmm. Um, I am involved with the school. I am now, and on staff with the church, I have, there's there's many things going on. So I will not be a guy who merely talks about this because it 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 it, it does it breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. I'm not the guy that can see a broken thing and leave it broken, not when it's this important. Right. So and I know you guys are on board with me. So um, so join us. It's amazing, and it doesn't mean join us. Come out here by all means. Come out here, uh, but watch what we're doing and do something likewise because it is a Christ focused, Christ first thing. It's a lot of stinking fun and it's, it's making so people better. And if you've got a better thing, please send it because I'm willing to learn from that. Uh, if the objective is truly um, what we just talked about. So anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. Jay, Nick, BK. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, again, special thanks to our sponsor, um, Able Nation. Please call Neil. Neil, what's up, brother? We love you, man. We know you check. You follow hey, us. So able-nation.org. Until we see all y'all again, God bless each and every one of you. Take care of one another.